So it's 11.30 and it has been in there for 18 hours and uh, we're glad to report the first bit of wind for a long time. doesn't look great let me just go I'm gonna go wash it off in clean water well that doesn't seem to have made much difference to be honest with you uh, what I'll do I'll get a uh, drill with a wire brush and give it a bit of a clean up but unfortunately it looks like I might have to soak it in something that'd be a shame greetings friends just making this video because it's the first time it has spun for a while I have had a couple of issues with problems with the cable uh, particularly here and here so I've replaced all the connectors just to be on the safe side uh, it's just tinkering around it won't be making any power at that low but it seems to start making power about 60 to 70 rpm <clears throat> oh I've got a chair jolly good oh it stopped sods law is in effect we shall wait and we shall see. I did reset the meter and it's gone up to one. Woo! Uh, I'll come back when the wind starts again. These are the connectors that were replaced. As it happened, dealing with that uh, 100 amp burst in that mega storm. But they'll be going in the bin. What made me investigate the cabling is firstly uh, there'd been some lawn mowing going on and secondly I noticed it was spinning fast enough and not making anything so that should be okay now but the wind's just gassed completely just so you know that's what the wind speed's saying 10 now uh, I'll try and go out and film at 3 o'clock when it says 11 Sweet. greetings friends we are here with the beast mark 2 uh, chain shenanigans didn't work out very well and a excellent viewer called Nico sent me £10 gift via PayPal and I've ordered one meter of shiny new chain with a connector. I just wanted to show you, I don't know if I spoke about if it's possible to use two gears at a time or not. I'm not sure about that until I've uh, sorted out maybe trying to get the motor shifted back uh, so we've got more room here then that would uh, be so the, the this gear could be welded to this one and then we could have two. With regards to being able to physically take it off whilst leave the blades on, that's something I'm interested in. And that's where the beauty of these bearings kicks in because I can simply lift this up and when those bearings are bolted down, let me get a bolt in there. Okay, we've got one bolt tight in there and one loose. So the idea is this would have to be, this the back bearing would have to come off. Yeah, and it was a super cool move putting those, uh, so if you remember in the video, actually it took ages to drill and weld a bolt on the underside of there, then if I'm taking the bearing off and putting it on, I'm not having to fanny about holding a nut underneath because it's already welded on under there, so. Sweet! Yeah, the idea would simply be that this could be lifted up like so and kept in place somehow with a lump of metal in there somewhere and this could then be easily taken off the end and swapped with something else uh, it might get stuck on there a little bit because that does happen doesn't it no it came off sweet came off so <clears throat> you can see there the 25 mil but if the motor and the gear was here in the front, that would be a lot more difficult to do that because you've got to remember the blades that are going on. If I put the blades on it off the Beast Mark 1, they actually weigh with the hub, they're 25 kilos, that blade. So that's why that produces so much juice when that starts rousing it around, you notice? So yeah, I thought that was cool. I, I keep getting asked questions about why I use gears at all. all right, and there's two sort of very simple reasons. Firstly, this is a high speed beast that's what it's for when the wind hits 20 20 miles per hour it's going to come alive 
and it's going to be like a fire breathing dragon so although on one end the sorry I'm, my brain's getting confused on one hand we're increasing the speed of the motor which will give us a lot more power albeit it will have a higher start speed but the other thing we're doing is we're reducing the speed of the blades whereas an ista breeze would need to hit 500 rpm to make whatever which is really fast and i'm not saying they don't do that this when this hits 300 uh, with the gear ratios we're going to have on this is going to be doing 450 and if this little beauty is doing 450 somebody is getting some juice uh, also the way i've done it with the drive shaft equalizes the stresses very well i think so we've got the blades on here but they're all kept in place by the bearings they can't move i made sure that was nice and straight and then the power's just transferred straight down to this that there's no messing and what people don't sort of really realize that's quite hard to turn this motor that's the the benefit of an axial flux turbine over this is that it has a lower startup speed because there, there's none of this you know so that is an advantage of them but my design has the advantage that the motor is suspended front and back which offers maximum stability i don't i haven't seen another design that will allow a motor to run at high rpm incredibly stably because it's mounted in both sides because it would normally be an electric bike wouldn't it sweet that is a three kilowatt 72 well it doesn't mean it's going to make that i'm not saying it is i'm not saying it's going to make that oh off goes the bearing But yes, I just thought I'd mention that about the gears because I'm wafting on a bit now. Uh, somebody says that the why use a chain because it wastes uh, too much. But the thing is, we like I say, we're going to be wanting to run at maximum velocity uh, with this bad boy, and the motorbike chain is the only thing that really cuts it. I used bike chain on an old wind turbine, which used a 24 volt DC type bike motor. The ones that are about half the size of this, some they're often quite wide. Uh, but that thing did not put up with the bashing like one of these will. Uh, with regards to the one kilowatt motor that is on that beauty, I may have just got incredibly lucky with that because that thing has put out some serious juice as you've seen in my uh, videos, especially the storm videos. Hopefully that will get going and we can go and have a look what the meter's saying. That'd be nice. With regards to the Rusto jobby on the chain, quite interesting that this was where the power was connected and it seems to have done quite a good job of getting rid of the rust on there but as it's gone down here it doesn't seem to have done much i had covered it in uh this which may not have helped but <clears throat> the, the uh, lovely nico has donated 10 pounds so we can have a shiny brand new chain sweet and when that turns up when that turns up the chain will be going straight in by then i will have decided if i'm just going to run with this or with that welded on as well which would mean <clears throat> it'd have to be done up by that grub screw just a reminder that there are there are bits to do on on the drive shaft because take this for example there'll be one collar here and hang on and then there will be a collar on the back and i know i've said before but we'll need to drill uh, a hole here for the grub screw <clears throat> i'll probably get rid of that and use an actual bolt uh, so there'll be a hole there and there'll be a hole there and that'll be bolted in and the important thing that'll do is that means when we get everything perfectly aligned that it can't slide back and forth because i've had it before where i've put the turbine up for example and when it's going up on the tower sometimes it'll flop around one way then it'll flop around another and i've had it where because i didn't have a rear one in this uh actually just shuffled forward even like a centimeter and of course then it's taking the chain out of the al alignment and the whole point is to have that actually 90 degrees bang on over the top perfectly in the middle bolted down so yeah that's probably enough waffle for now but when the chain turns up that'll be straight in there and we'll uh yeah we'll get testing it somehow i have had an idea that if we were to fix everything in place by bolting like one of my crutches right to the table and then getting it wired up to something and then using a pressure washer 
to blast this from this angle to try and make it turn. So that, that might be an experiment because once that sucker gets going, it's going to be a sight to behold. So that may be one to definitely keep your eyes on. So I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Right, the wind is no doubt about to die because this always happens when it goes to the meter. Yep. I was hoping it would have a little waffle and then get up to 100, but it's not looking likely. We'll leave that for another day. We've got to be making some juice now. That's more like it on a non-windy day. Right, glad I got that at the end. Sweet.